Hello, this is Killer Otaku Robots on another travel special. Here we are. Uh, we have a very uninteresting travel log here. The shortest travel you'll probably ever see in such a travel log. We are going a whopping 109 kilometers. 109 kilometers because that is the rated official range of the 2014 Smart 4.2 electric drive, which is my car here. Um, the idea is to see whether or not it'll actually make it that far. Uh, I'd like to think it will. I'm going to try to do some things to make sure it will. Um, but if it doesn't, then that's okay. We have a trailer, stuff like that, and we get to film something else that I haven't really seen that many videos on YouTube about. What happens when an electric car goes flat dead? How long does it take to go flat dead? And what is the actual range of this particular vehicle? Um, yeah, that and more in this episode of Killer Otaku Robots. Alright, in order to test the range, we have decided to take a small trip. Our starting point is the PV Mart in Spruce Grove, Alberta, and our destination is the Burger Baron in Drayton Valley. We have chosen to avoid major highways so we can travel at a slower speed without disrupting traffic. Hopefully this will increase the efficiency of the car so we can make it there without issue. The PV Mart was chosen as the starting point because they have a power charger available for us to use. This way we can make sure the car's charge is topped up to 100% before we go. We have also chosen to leave early in the afternoon, once again to avoid traffic. The main goal is to travel at an average of about 65 kilometers an hour. Whether or not we are able to maintain that speed will remain to be seen. The reason we are choosing the Burger Baron is because it's a restaurant that Raymond has fond memories of from when he was a child, and he recalls it as the best burger place that he's ever been to. I'm a bit of a fan of these Burger Baron restaurants, so I've decided to uh, give this a try for myself. If we do make it there, we will see how much charge is left, and then do some more tests to see how the car will behave as we run it down to zero. This may involve us driving around in a few circles. And now our journey begins. Alright, rolling up windows, making sure the uh efficiency and drag and all of that is set up right. Whoops, that is the ignition. I do not want to stop on that. Reversing out. Alright. Here we go. Here, let's check out the uh, walkie-talkie, make sure it's working. Hello, everybody. Is it on? Are we are we ready to go? Wait for me. Uh, parking. We're ready to go. <laughs> All right, this is Free Willy. Ready to depart. No man, you found out. Okay, lead car. Are you ready? Passing me now. Okay. It is already a very warm 20 degrees. For this trip, I will not be allowed to use my uh, air conditioning. We are going to do several tricks to make sure the efficiency is at its highest. So, no air conditioning, no radio. Um, not, I'm not charging anything. Okay, there you go. I unplugged my USB charger because there is an LED on that. It's not going to do much. I think that can go. I'm going to be going fairly slowly. Um, now, this one here is going to be watching this number right here. 103 kilometers is what it rates it as, what it thinks I've ranged for. I'm in the wrong lane. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there are two gauges here. This one on the right is the voltage gauge that shows the percentage of max power that I'm putting to the motor. Uh, there's also a recharge size on the left-hand side. Uh, this gauge here is the all-important gauge that we are going to be paying a lot of attention to. That is the battery gauge. 
that shows us how much battery power we have. That is based off of the voltage that the, that the lithium ion cells give off. So it's not exactly the most accurate. So of course, we're taking a little bit of the, uh, of the idea for this trip from a couple of my favorite shows. One of them, of course, being Top Gear, or as it's called now, The Grand Tour. Um, and the other being one of my favorite YouTube channels, Regular Car Reviews. So you will notice a number of times in this video, I reference both of those channels and make a number of jokes in a similar style that they would. The following is a car review done in the style of Regular Car Reviews. Please check out his channel. I think it's great. 2014 Smart 42 Electric Drive. Electric cars are fucking great, and my car is just wicked fast. This car may have a ton of torque, but when I drag it, I come in last. The 2014 Electric Drive, or I kid you not, ED for short, is a 75 horsepower rear wheel drive mid-engine beast weighing only 900 kilograms. Honestly, I think the name is just terrible, as I can't imagine anyone wanting to own a car synonymous with erectile dysfunction. Although most owners of this vehicle call it ED and not ED, which I find understandable, I call mine Ernie as its colors remind me of Mr. Freeze. <laughs> its heritage is a little mixed. It's a very European cars, and in many ways, it's very French by design. This makes sense as it's made in France. But in many ways, it's very German. It's very precise, it's very efficient, it looks proper, and looks like it doesn't want to give you any trouble. But don't get it wrong, on the inside, Arnold here is metal as fuck. This car has 100 foot-pounds of torque, and for the small amount of weight that it has, it actually makes it so this car has a fairly decent amount of pull. The acceleration in this car is quite impressive at low speeds, but loses torque quickly because of the voltage safety limits of its 17.6 kilowatt battery. The battery inside is rated for 109 kilometers of range, and Mercedes promises that it will be able to reach at least 80% of that even after 10 years of use. The ED gathers a lot of attention due to its strange design, and most people don't even notice that this is an electric. Part of that, of course, is to do with the fact that the smart car is not exactly exactly a popular choice here in Alberta. All right, let's have me from the past go over a few features of my particular smart car. So here we are at the Sustainable. Uh, a lot of interesting cars around here, and I figure uh, around its peers, especially this one, which is basically the same car, um, I can do a little bit of in-depth talking about my car and its features. So. This is the 2014 Smart 42 Electric Drive. Um, its MSRP when it was new was, is about uh, 32,000. I got it for a little bit less than that because uh, I got it used. It actually has a decent amount of trunk space. Uh, forgive the a lot of crap that's in here, um, but it has a decent amount of trunk space. It has a little cubby hole here where you can keep your charger. The charger that it comes with is this one, which is a uh, 120 volt, which from zero to full will charge the car in about 14 hours. Um, except if you do something like I did, where you went beyond zero, that took about 20 hours. Well, close to closer to 18 uh, to to charge from complete dead, um, which it does fine. That this is a little stiff on mine. I don't know why that is. Uh, it, one trick that I use to get a little bit more storage in the back is this here removes. Oh, that's why I'm pulling it from the wrong spot. So that removes. And there's another clip further down that it connects into. So there's right here where I'm pointing. That's where it clips into there. And there's one on the other side. You have to move the seat up a little bit in order for it to clip into that. But that'll give you a little bit more room. Um, and there's little pockets here you can keep stuff in. There's a pocket on the back of this uh, divider here for it. And these uh, little things here you can see on that side, there's a little storage compartment. Underneath here is the engine, well, motor and not particularly anything interesting in there. 
The inside itself is actually pretty roomy, uh, big enough to fit me. I am not a compact individual. Uh, so there's uh, little pockets there for trash and random crap like that. Uh, some more pockets here for, for snack food to, to keep my diabetes up. As you can see, I fit fine. Lots of room, lots of headroom. Uh, up here we have the moonroof, which uh, moves back and forth with this handy dandy device. It's not an automatic transmission, but it drives like it was because there's no gears, it's direct drive. It has kind of a nice-ish, like fake leather steering wheel and gear knob. Um, which kind of adds a nice little like premium feel to the whole car. Which is nice, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a Mercedes, it's supposed to have some class. <laughs> in the front here, uh, it's not a frunk like it is in the, in, in the Tesla. It's uh, just some stuff for your, for your various fluids, like windshield washer, antifreeze, um, air filter. It is available in other colors as well. Here's the uh, silver one, which I actually think looks better than mine. <laughs> Over here is the charging port, which is, uh, I think it's like J1227 or something like that. I'll, I'll have that written up there. Uh, this one only supports AC charging. It doesn't do the direct DC. Uh, it does 120 and, and uh, 240 volt. And uh, yeah, if you have the 240 volt charger, it charges the car about three times as fast. Uh, the total range on it is about 110 kilometers. Um, well, it's kind of interesting. In North America, it's rated to 110. Well, 109 uh, more specifically. But it, everywhere else, it's rated to about 125. Uh, we have our uh, handy dandy spoiler to give us, you know, extra downforce in, in, in the tight corners. Of course, no, it's just the hatch. <laughs> you know, it's heated. There's air conditioning, climate control, uh, a nice car stereo in here. It supports lots of different mp3 formats wave i think it supports flack i'm not so certain certain about that uh, sd card memory stick uh, dvd it a little bit of everything it's actually kind of nice there's a phone charging port here but it looks like it's just one amp it's not it's not two amp not going to give you any decent charge it has an aux connection right beside it that bit that that bit actually is pretty handy to have um, but if you want to charge your phone i highly suggest you getting you know something like probably a little better than this io gear piece of crap but uh, something like this will probably work a little bit better for you to get a uh, full two amp charge on your phone. So the lighter port is down there. Um, it's a little annoying. I find it kind of hits your leg a lot and uh, you accidentally wind up unplugging it. I've probably worn it out a little bit just uh, by hitting it so many times. Although I am a larger individual, stuff like that will happen more often than if you are a, you know, less bulged. That's the general over overhaul of the car here i like it it's pretty good i'm gonna try to see if i can keep this sucker as long as i can so before i start reviewing the car you should probably take this whole thing with one very giant enormous grain of salt the car i'm reviewing here is my own it's the car that i purchased for myself for daily use now the thing about talking about your own car is it's kind of like talking about your own child why, he's just the most specialist car ever. There's nothing at all wrong with him. So when I go into how great and fabulous this car is, just keep in mind that my opinion is just a tad biased. That being said though, I probably should never be a father because my car is a miserable fucking failure. I've had this thing for almost a year now, and in that time, multiple parts have failed on it. The AC compressor, the cabin fan, and even the entire transmission had to be replaced. There was a time when the 12 volt battery kept dying on me, so Mercedes had to replace half of the electronics inside just to try to figure out why. That took about a month to do, by the way. It really sucks to be forced to take a bus in the middle of winter just weeks after you bought a car. And despite how many times I try to get them to fix the front passenger side speaker, it still cuts out sometimes when I go over bumps. I mean, yeah, it's pretty quick, but once you reach about 80 kilometers an hour, this thing has about as much acceleration as a 90s minivan. The range of this car is crap. 100 kilometers is very limiting for someone who lives in Alberta. I would not suggest this car to anyone here unless they have something else to take for long trips. It's fine for city driving, but not much else. Also, this car is so weird and pretentious looking that it makes a Prius look normal. 
Now sure, the car is light, but if you look at the size of the car, it's actually not really that light. It's only about 10% lighter than a Mazda Miata. Now the thing about a Mazda Miata is that it's got a much faster and heavier 150 horsepower engine in it. It's also a fair bit bigger than the Smart 4 too. It's about 50% longer and 30% wider. The reason the Smart is as heavy as it is, is due to the Smart 4 2's iconic feature. The Tridian Safety Cell. Okay, the Tridian Safety Cell is quite literally a steel roll cage that makes up the majority of the frame of the car. Because of the cell, this car, year after year, has earned the rating for the safest car in its weight and size classes. While this doesn't make the car indestructible, it drastically increases your chance of survival in a crash. This added weight and small wheelbase makes for a very firm ride. You feel every bump, crack, or tiny pebble on these damned pothole-ridden Edmonton roads. If you have any sort of back condition, I recommend that you avoid this car like the plague. And despite all of this, despite all these issues, Despite the fact that the wind blows this thing around like it had a giant sail on the top, and there's an annoying amount of road noise at speeds higher than 70 kilometers an hour, I am completely in love with this car. This is the easiest, most fun to drive car I have ever been in. Now, to be perfectly honest, I have not really driven that many cars. I've driven maybe 10 in my entire life. And I'm pretty certain that if I had the chance to drive a few more cars, that I would probably find one better than this. But one thing to keep in mind is that of the cars that I have driven, one of them was a Tesla Model S. Then I can say with complete certainty that I like the Smart 4 II far more than the Tesla Model S. Now, before you Tesla fanboys start writing in the comment section, just, just wait a second, wait a second. I am in no way saying that my ED is better than a Tesla Model S. I'm just saying it drives better. Now, hold on as I explain this. Daimler has been making cars for over 120 years now, and they've been making sport and luxury cars for the majority of this time. The German engineering of Mercedes is present even in this little tykes toy of a car. The brand Smart is short for Swatch Mercedes Art. Even in the name, Smart is Mercedes. My ED is a tiny little car with way more performance and utility than you'd ever expect from something that size. This thing is super quick around corners and just as quick off a stoplight. More importantly, you don't have to go very fast to have fun in this car. Unlike the Model S, which feels more like remotely controlling a jet fighter than driving a car, the ED lets you feel what the car is doing. You feel every little bump and detail on the road through the steering wheel and the brakes. And since the throttle is just about as responsive as the Tesla's, this car makes you feel like it's an extension of your own body. When you drive a 4-2 electric. You don't have ED. You are ED. So let me sum this up. As a daily commuter, it's hard to do better than this car. It's fun to use and extremely convenient to drive around in. In the winter, it performs perfectly fine and gets very warm very easily. Being electric, it's extremely cheap to run, and in theory at least, it should be cheap to maintain. The only fluids in this thing that I have to replace is the windshield fluid, radiator fluid, and brake fluid. There's barely any moving parts, and overall it's much simpler than a normal engine. Right now, in Alberta at least, it's really hard to find charging stations, and I guess it doesn't really matter anyways, because the Smart 4 2 can't charge with Chatamo or any of the other high-speed charging systems, so you'll probably be charging at home anyways. So, this is something I like to say for anyone looking to get an electric car to use as a daily driver. If you live in a northern climate like Canada, it's a good idea to take the distance from work and back, and then multiply that by two. If the range of the car that you're looking at can't even meet that, then I recommend you get a hybrid or something else. But if the range of an electric car does work for you, I strongly suggest you get one. They're a lot of fun. Even if it's not the smart, you'll probably enjoy the ton of low-end torque that you can only get with an electric drivetrain. As a car, the Model S is probably better overall. But for the $25,000 price range of a 4.2 electric drive, I can't think of anything better. And definitely not as fun. But if you do decide to get a car like this, one thing to remember is that this car is very strange and gathers a lot of attention, both good and bad. Remember to roll with the punches and don't be afraid to laugh alongside the terrible jokes will make an expense of your ED. We will now return to the scheduled program. Jesus, it's hot in here. That's probably one of the disadvantages of this car. This car has glass on all three sides and on the top and in the back. It's basically a roll cage with windows around and not much else. So it makes it very light. It's somewhat aerodynamic considering it's kind of cuboid shape, but 
It's a greenhouse in here. It traps in any amount of heat. In the winter, I barely have to use the heater. I just have to park this thing in the sun and then it's fine. It's plus 17 outside right now. Now, that's Celsius. I know a lot of people right now are just looking at me going, plus 17, you're a wimp. How can you figure that's warm? I'm Canadian. It, the normal weather here is like negative 20. This is, this is way too warm for someone like me. Do you, do you expect a penguin to be able to survive in these temperatures? No, no. Actually, probably would. But uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's kind of the situation here. And it may be plus 18 outside. Well, 17, but I said early 18 is what's showing now on the dash. But it is significantly warmer than that right now in the car. So throughout the progress of this, you are most certainly going to see me sweat. Now, the general idea of this is that when we're going up hills, I'm going to wind up lowering my speed down a little bit. I'm going down hills, I'm going to take advantage of that and keep my speed up a little bit higher. Now, right now I'm only going 60. That's because this bar here, my uh, power gauge, is showing that I'm running at about 25%. That's about where I want to keep it. Because of that, I will be going a little below the speed limit. Now, there are cars behind me, so I'm gonna go a little above that because I don't wanna be a complete asshole. So let's, uh, okay, there we go. I think I can keep up now. We're now going at about 80. Unless we have a little bit of a downhill, I can maintain that. There's a stop, stop sign above, so I'm gonna start slowing down already. The idea is that I don't want to use the brake as much as possible. This has regenerative braking. That only does so much. Oh, this might be a gravel road. I'm not too pleased about that. Mm. Oh. A <sighs> little bit of a bump, we're fine. This car does not have the best suspension. It is very stiff. No, 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 no. I'm aiming for 80 kilometers an hour at this point. Pretty flat terrain, I could probably maintain that while only using 25% power. Oh, 80 is the maximum as well, excellent. Let's stick around 75 kilometers for this one then. Yeah, we're using about 5% power. Not five, that's 15. So it's perfect. 75 is perfect. Really missing air conditioning right now. One thing I didn't mention to my friends at the time is this mission's true goal. It's not to make it to Drayton Valley, but it's to break the distance record for the 2014 Smart ED, which is somewhere around 193 kilometers. In order to beat this, I'm attempting to employ a method called hypermiling, where all of my accelerations and braking are supposed to be as smooth as possible. I maintain a efficient and optimal speed for the car to use as little energy as possible. The entire point of this is to keep the energy draw from the batteries somewhere between 15 and 25%. In order to do this effectively, I can't use cruise control, and I have to keep an eye on my power gauge. Stop sign coming up. Again, one of the tricks for hypermiling is to keep things like you don't even have a brake. So you don't want to touch your brake until absolutely necessary. Here we are at the road that we need. Accelerating very slowly. Maximum speed is 100. Limit's 100, what do you want? I'm thinking about 90, let's see how it goes. The car's going at about 30% maximum power outage, so that's uh, pretty close to uh, what our goal was, we are at 90% power right now. Estimated range left on the car is 97 kilometers. 94 kilometers to Drayton. 
Okay, so that means uh, according to the onboard computer, we will make it. Um, especially considering how this thing is very, very conservative in its estimates. Well, Clint, I hope you like the crack in Mike's windshield being in every shot. That's fine, we're YouTubers. People expect this level of potato quality. As the kilometers piled on, a slight problem developed. Clint, this is a single road. We have to go the speed limit. Normally I'd disagree, but there's quite a bit more traffic than I originally expected, so maintaining a higher speed is probably the safer choice to make. Going 90 percent. My dash says 95. Should I increase it to 100? So freewheeling, your uh, speedometer is slightly off. Okay. Strawberry shortcake is baking in at 90. Oh, that cut into the power. There we go, now going 100. Okay, I readjusted the uh, cruise control. I'm now going at 100, or 95 to normal people. As we journeyed closer to our destination, the constant higher speed of the vehicle started to have definite visible effects on the battery life and the estimated range remaining. Alright, I'm already seeing the problem with this particular trip. The large majority of it is uphill. Now there are a significant number of downhill segments. That does help with the battery charge, but not enough to make a big deal. Now, most of the trip is around here. 35% usage. 35% usage is too much. More than recommended. What I would like is somewhere around 15 to 25. 15 to 25 percent, I can push a hell of a lot further than that recommended number in the dash. This, I'm not sure we're going to make it. With, with the power with the setup the way it is, I don't think I'm going to be able to do my ultimate goal, which is a shame. With the increased speed and the increased temperature inside the cab, this was slowly changing from a best case scenario for range to a worst case scenario in range. The heat was also having an effect on the cameras. We're at 40% power now, traveling at around 90 kilometers an hour, getting hit by many bugs. Speed limit, limit of 80, dropping down to uh, 75. Speed limit of 50. Right now, I'm going to say something that you're never going to hear anywhere else on this planet. Thank God for construction. That's almost heresy. <laughs> and just like that, our chances to make it to Drayton Valley have drastically improved. About 39% power left, 47 kilometers left. What a beautifully smooth road. Here's the snowman. Good joint road, Freeway. 50 kilometers again. I'm in no hurry. This is nothing but good for me. Okay, maybe not. The sun. It is very bright. I am very melting. The car does not sound happy. But it thinks we're doing fine. The number actually went up for our range. Shortly afterwards, the construction ended and we found ourselves on the final stretch to Drayton Valley. Free Willie, this is, uh, Snowman, what's your DTE? <laughs> okay, we got 38 kilometers left. Battery is at 27%. Uh, my current speed is 80. Uh, looks like we are accelerating back to something reasonable. Well, we we're now officially convoy. Got big blue behind us, or black coal. Just hit 20% of the battery. It is no longer giving me a range estimate. Oh. 
Final stretch. This is where get things where things get interesting. Will we make it? I don't know. Now that'd be very disappointing. A car like this. Everything I was told is that it's a conservative estimate. Tires that are optimal pressure. The temperature is just right. Weather conditions are just right. I have everything off. And yet, here it is. Starting to run a little low. I'm a little uncertain if this will work. I don't know. This is this is do or die time. The only way I can do this trip is in the middle of the night by the looks of it. I would have to do this at about 50 kilometers an hour if, you, if I wanted to meet max efficiency. We are not doing that. We are doing 85, which is well below the speed limit, but that's all I can manage because we're not breaking the law. We are skirting it. Just hit 10%, we're getting close. I'd say 15 kilometers left on this sucker. Free Willy, I thought it was not giving you a reading. Oh, that's a notification, I just had to clear it. Uh, it says 17, I just found it. I think we're in luck, I think I see Drayton Valley up ahead. Sign says two kilometers. Charge station in Drayton Valley? No, no there is not. We're almost at our destination. Did we do it? Now it's not giving me a uh, estimated kilometers left anymore. Now it's just saying low battery. Okay, so we're inside Drayton Valley. That bit is actually working pretty well here. We are almost at the fabled Burger King that Raymond continues to go on and on about. Now, there is very little battery life left on this. The, the gauge is, is telling me low battery. It's not giving me any more kilometers left. Um, I don't know what's happening. I'm seeing it drop as I am speaking. This battery is on its last legs. It, it does not want to cooperate with me. It is not happy. This entire car is not particularly happy. Um, but it's still running. It's still going. We're not there yet. Who knows? Will we make it? We're almost there. Gotta go nice and slow. This is the slowest finish to a race that has ever been on television. Except we're not on television. The slowest finish to a race that has ever been on YouTube. Will we make it? Will the car survive? Will the car even charge after this? Oh, we're going right. We're almost there, ladies and gents. We're just gents and more gents. You hyped? Lovely. Oh, we can see it. It's right over there to the left. We're, I, I, it's like a hundred feet away. God, I hope it's open. Here we are, 7% left. I think that's a success. 7% left, we've meet, we've reached our destination. Woohoo! All right. So, here we are at our destination. My original goal, all right, yeah, here's, here, here's the menu. 
of the amazing Burger Baron. Dave's Burger Baron. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so here we are at the Burger Baron. My original goal was to try to beat the uh, the current record for range for the Smart 4.2 uh, 2013, which was about 193 kilometers. We did not do that. We did not get anywhere near that. Probably going significantly slower than we were. We we were too close to the speed limit. Yeah. So, originally my intention was to see if I could beat that by driving back to Edmonton. That's not going to happen. So we're going to run her dry. Probably just do circles around Drayton. See how many circles around Drayton we can get. Um, and just, I'll, I'll just keep an eye on the uh, speedometer there to show. Uh, not, not speedometer. Which was the one that shows the kilometers? Odometer. Odometer. Just show how many, how many kilometers we've run. And yeah, just run that to our uh, total here. And so we did just that several circles around the city of Drayton Valley later. We found ourselves with a dead battery. Oh yeah. Uh oh. We're dead. We did it. And it just suddenly clunked out. And I press the, the gas pedal. The noise maker goes on. But nothing else. All right. This is the moment I've been waiting for. I, I don't know what happens to the car. What else can we use? So I haven't parked now. Can I turn on the stereo? Yeah, that's all good. Oh no, I think it just turned itself off. Yep. Interesting. What about the fans? Fans still work. I'm not going to test that. Um, gauge clusters are good. Turned off the car. Charge high voltage battery now. Okay, that's interesting. What happens if I turn it back on? I think it'll let me go a little bit more. Should we test it out? Yes. Oh, it's got a battery indicator. That's new. It's letting me drive again. Now, at this point, I'm driving it back. Yep. Yeah. It looks like it had just about another kilometer's worth of range in it, but soon after that, it uh, went dead once again. Oh, it's come down. All right, we've, we've reached zero. Um, this is as far as the car will go. I tried starting it a couple more times. Uh, it gave us a few more kilometers, but no, that's about it. 11,008. So we've done it. Sucker's dead. All right. Just drove in circles for a while. I think we made somewhere close to 140 kilometers. Um, I'll just put the actual number up in the top right or something. So yeah, mission accomplished. Now I know how far this car will go. I wonder if I should do this again, but under different terms. Now I know how far it goes from zero. Yeah, that was quite a lot actually. All right, time for some data. The distance we traveled was approximately 130 kilometers. This was measured using the video footage of the odometer at both the beginning and the end of the trip. 
It took about an hour and 52 minutes to run this car dry. That brings us to an average of about 69 kilometers an hour. 69, dudes! <laughs> The interesting bit is that once the car reached 0%, it still went on for another 10 kilometers. During these last few kilometers, there was very little difference to the overall performance of the car. There were no warning signs that my car was running low, other than the dash and the battery gauge. The weirdest bit is that it still let me drive for another kilometer after my car died the first time. My guess is that you still have a tiny bit of power left so that you can drive it to a safe position on the side of the road. If you ever find yourself in a position like this, don't try to drive it further like I did. Save the last bit of power to drive to the side of the road and then to drive it up the ramp on the tow truck because this car is surprisingly hard to push. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and please subscribe if you want to see more wacky stuff from us. Also, please feel free to help us out by donating to the Patreon link in the description below. And now, the final conclusion. And, uh, yeah, I'd say that's mission accomplished. We made it. Uh, we got our trip back secure thanks to a minor little modification that I thought up with my genius mind of mine. So, I've managed to convert this electric car into a hybrid. This car will have no trouble reaching any destination as long as gasoline fuel is available. Ign ignore that muffling noise behind us. Everything is fine and perfectly normal. This car is now the greatest Smart 4-2 electric to ever exist. Yeah, okay. We're, we're done. Yeah. Wait, wait, what, 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 what are you, what are you panning out for? Hey, 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 what, what are you, what are you showing? Don't, don't do that. What, did, hey, hey. Ah, well. <laughs> I guess that does it for this episode of Killer Attacker Robots. May the Mecha be with you!